Have you ever noticed that when you want to find out what speed your CPU or graphics card runs at, there's a bunch of seemingly conflicting information? Well, the way processors work has changed in amazing ways over the last couple of decades, but one of the most remarkable things about modern microprocessors, whether we're talking about the ones that go in your phone, your PC, or even in a massive server, is their ability to dynamically deliver only the performance that's needed at a given moment. I'll explain why they do this, but first a bit of history. It didn't always work this way. When I was growing up, a 486DX 33MHz processor ran at 33MHz, gosh darn it, and if 33MHz was good enough for when it was working, working hard than it was good enough for when it was sitting around doing nothing too. And that was fine, while a couple of things were still true. First is that processors ran so cool that they just needed tiny small thinned heat sinks on them, or at worst a very small fan. And second is that the laptop mobile PC revolution hadn't started yet, and a little extra power consumption is a relatively small deal if you're not trying to power something off of a battery. Well, that changed fast. Intel and AMD were were locked in an arms race to see who could create the fastest desktop CPUs. Voltages and power were pumped up and existing design architectures were pushed to their limits, all without worrying too much about efficiency in pursuit of the almighty gigahertz barrier and beyond. To hell with cool and quiet. I mean, to put this in perspective, from 1996 to 2000 alone, stock cooling went from looking like this to looking like this. But that all came at a cost. Your power bill aside, more power consumption produces waste heat, and when a processor runs hot all the time, its lifespan is reduced. Something had to be done. But what if you could run at benchmark crushing high performance frequencies when needed and turn down the juice the rest of the time? Well, that's exactly what happened. Intel Speedstep was born. All right, Linus, so that's a lot of preamble, but why does my CPU or graphics card have these ambiguous specifications? Well, because while all this was happening, a mobile revolution was occurring, and when you're going to be running off of a battery, power consumption sits in the front seat and raw performance sits in the back. So the philosophies of the processor makers changed, and we stopped getting massive leaps in single core performance. But computing demands also didn't stand still, so they needed a different solution. Back to this graph. A lower clocked processor core actually consumes so much less power that you can put more than one of them on a CPU instead of a single high performance core for better overall performance and optimized workloads. Multi-core processors were born, but some applications don't benefit from these additional cores and we still need to crush single threaded performance from time to time. And that's what a CPU with Intel Turbo Boost does. Unlike Speedstep's outright performance reduction, it actually redirects power from cores that aren't needed and sacrifices some efficiency in the remaining core or cores to boost up the clock speeds to a predetermined limit. And that is what we see when we look at CPU specifications. A nominal frequency that all cores can reach at the same time and an amped up boosted frequency that a single core can reach as long as thermal and power limits allow it when you need the extra juice. This type of dynamic power on demand design isn't unique to Intel either. Nvidia GPU Boost boosts the entire processor rather than redirecting power from one part to another, but similarly looks for sufficiently low power consumption and temperatures and increases performance on demand. Pretty cool stuff, eh? Speaking of pretty cool, my CPU when it's idle. Yeah, sorry, no awkward segue today since our sales team didn't manage to sell an ad integration on this video. So that's all that's left is for me to thank you guys for watching, pathetically beg you to like and share the video or dislike it if you hate it, I mean, that's fine too. And remind you to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.